Welcome to the Free Dev Cafe, episode 151 with Davide Carrera. My name is Donny. I'm the host of the Free Dive Cafe. The Free Dive Cafe is the long form interview podcast that explores the backstories, the training, the challenges, and the combined wisdom and personal philosophies of the world's free divers. You can find this podcast at freedivecafe.com, freediveandthrive.com, and on all good podcast players. The show notes can also be found there. You can find me in Dahab, Egypt, the mecca of the worldwide freediving community, where I offer unique freediving courses and training in apnea, breathwork, yoga, and the freediving lifestyle. Come visit me anytime to begin or continue your journey into the depths. If you enjoy the podcast, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with new releases. Today we have Davide Carrera. Davide was born in Turin in Italy and began freediving as a child during his summer spent in Liguria. He was part of the world championship winning teams of 1996 and 2001 and established a free immersion world record shortly after when he dove to 91 meters. He moved away from the competitive sphere for a while and went on to study yoga extensively and he integrates that into his freediving. And it was his tale of solitary wandering across the Mediterranean in his 28 foot trimaran that inspired my first interest in David Day. We first spoke five years ago on episode 22 of the Free Dive Cafe podcast. Now we meet again face to face in Dahab to discuss his recent return to the very top tier of the freediving competitive scene and what it takes to dive 130 meters deep. Okay, let's dive. Okay, Davide, welcome. Welcome back to the Free Dive Cafe, uh, which this time is actually hosted by uh, Dahab Freedivers. So thank you to uh, Carlos for uh, giving us the space to uh, have this conversation here. Um, so y you first appeared on the show on episode 22, which I think was like five years ago, four More or, or less, five years yes. ago. Yes, I think yeah. it was uh, 2018. Yeah, yes. yeah. So and that was you know one of my all-time favorite episodes, and um, the listeners also one of their all-time favorite episodes. So really nice to have you back again. But I don't know if you remember we actually did another episode that we never released. Mm. Do you remember this? Not much. Yeah, I know. And I also <laughs> I also struggle to remember it because I think it was just around the time when uh, when COVID started and we were doing like a training talk episode thing and it was initially going to be for the patrons and then was going to be released later. And I just completely forgot about all that. Yeah. And I did many of those episodes. I have maybe like seven or eight with people that have never been released. So that's going to be one for a special later. But I have to find it first. Uh, you're in Egypt, in Dahab, with me this time, um, and you were just telling, telling us that uh, you haven't been here for a very long time. What brings you back to Dahab this time? This time is uh, a friend, um, uh, Bruno Caverna. He's uh, mainly is a martial artist uh, from Brazil. And uh, he's my age, he's uh, 47, uh, almost 48. And uh, he's very interested in uh, the research of the movement and uh, somatics and uh, fears. And uh, so he's, he's a very interesting guy. And uh, so he fall in love with uh, freediving. And uh, he thought that freediving as well is a very nice tool uh, to uh, know better ourselves and to explore our emotions and uh, fears. And so he get very passionate about freediving. He contacted me to, to do a workshop together. So working on land with uh, movement and uh, some uh, exercise like fighting, but it's not really a fighting. It's more just exploring movement and, uh, and then in the water. Yeah, so this is why I'm here back. Is it like just you and Bruno together or there are other people? No, there, is, there, are, there is also Alina that I just met and Julia that is a friend of Alina and they are both uh, freediving instructor. And then there is uh, Emma that is my girlfriend and she will help me as well uh, uh, with people in the water. And uh, yeah, so we are a nice uh, team. And um, and like I told you before, is I was here many many years ago. Uh, I think the first time it was around maybe 2002, 
2003 or also before, I don't remember exactly. And the last time I was here, it was in 2008. And I was a little bit afraid to come back because uh, I know that um, it's changing, changed a lot. But um, I, I'm happy because I arrived yesterday and uh, in this first day I see that is not uh, uh, the vibes is, is still nice is is good vibe also is much much more touristic and so many people and so many construction but there is still a nice vibe so I'm happy. yeah <laughs> I, I'm pretty critical of, of places because actually the last place where I lived was a small island and I was there for four or five years. And I saw in four years it changed from that everyone was leaving the island to, to go away to the mainland. And then the free diving started there. And then the tourism, the tourism from the free diving became very big. And then COVID came. So there was mass tourism coming to the island. I saw the reef, you know, pretty much disappear in front of my eyes. Uh, just too many snorkelers, free divers, scuba divers, kayakers. And in the end, you know, I was, it was too changed for me. Yeah. So can, I can understand, you know, the apprehensiveness about coming back to Dahab, that maybe it was spoiled somehow. But, you know, and I was critical of maybe coming here, like maybe it's too late for Dahab. Yeah. But uh, actually, no. And I think uh, it's not just that the sea is still amazing here. It's still beautiful. But the people here, the community is still, uh, is still, is still beautiful as well and, and lots yeah. of amazing people. Yeah, now as well... It depends from uh, season in life. Now I try, um, I spent some period of my life where I was very critical. And now I try to look more at the positive things and, uh, and see that uh, then there is something uh, good always. And um, for example, to me, to see so many free diver and the free diving movement growing is uh, it's something nice because I know how much free diving changed my life and how much is a, a healing sp sport because it's very, if you take it in the right way, uh, so j not just for the ego of doing some more meters, but for like inner search. Uh, is a powerful tool to to grow like a person and is very healing and so um, uh, it's very good for uh, for everybody uh, for the humanity to have more and more free divers yes. so this is very nice and then of course if uh, we go many people in a place some more pollution and uh, and the their coral are so fragile and they disappear but as well uh, the red sea is so big and it's so alive and there are so many reefs that also if some coral they have to sacri sacrifice themselves <laughs> here <laughs> there are so many other coral around that the thing is i think is very important if um, uh, through also the free diving movement we can uh, uh, try to uh, make the people more aware about the environment and uh, do some sensibilization uh, and trying to be everybody more respectful for the environment then uh, the impact we can have is uh, much more positive than the negativity of losing some corals and uh, and so when people they uh, fall in love for uh, the ocean free diving uh, I think then they become more, a little bit more uh, respectful and is our responsibility like instructor to pass them this message like the priority and then if we learn to live uh, in also when we are back in our hometown or uh, anywhere in the world there are few things that if our Mm, uh, done from many people are um, much better than uh, big things make it alone what I mean if somebody live in a cave and with any kind of impact on the environment is doing a great thing but of course not everybody can live in a cave and eating just uh, 
uh, berries and uh, leaves. Uh, but if everybody turn off a light when you get out from the room, that it seems a stupid thing, but so many times people leave the light on without being in a room, save so much energy that it will make a very nice impact on the on the planet and also like uh, stop using so much plastic and i think in 2023 still buying plastic bottle for drinking water is something crazy that we try really to have to change and uh, yeah it's a lot of little things that can make a big impact yeah. if done from many people <clears throat> Yeah, and um, on the subject of plastic bottles, this is one of my main projects that I want to get involved with here in Sinai and Dahab and Blue Hole. It's insane that people are still able to buy plastic bottles when we have the water dispenser yeah. solution. Yeah, and um, you can bring your own yes. bottle. So, and, and, you know, of course, it. you've been around the world in many places. You've seen this strategy work well in many places i'm sure i've been in places where it's you know every place has a water dispenser and that's something that i'm going to be involved in uh later later in the year to try to bring some uh some action in that area yeah. yes and talk, talking about changes in the free diving world obviously a lot of, even since i started you know when i came into free diving seven years ago i was looking up to you davide carrera and, and i'm sitting here with you which is pretty cool but um, I've also been in the community and the world of free diving for long enough now that I've seen a lot of changes. And you know, this year, um, this year was there was some like really big performances. There were some amazing world records, but there were also some you know some drama, like especially in this topic of doping and the doping uh, scandal, as they call it. And I wanted to get your thoughts and feelings on this. And how do you feel about the whole thing? Yeah, look, in this moment, uh, listening to you, I had like a, like my stomach, you know, like a tension inside. And, and it's kind of sad as well for me. Um, first of all, because uh, before I was just saying that uh, freediving is a healing uh, sport. It's mm, allowed ourselves... Uh, to know better ourselves, to discover uh, our fears, our deepest fears. And is only in the moment we become conscious of our fears that we can work on that and become more free. And so this is a very nice process. That, like any kind of process, it took some time and, uh, and a lot of work like uh, meditation, like uh, thinking about and uh, trying to overcome our fears and work on it. And uh, the topping uh, with the su substance that are being used and discovered in the last uh, periods is like skipping this uh, side. So when you skip this side, Okay, you have a nice performance, you have a record. And uh, then after one year, the record is totally for, forgot from the most part of people, from yourself as well. And uh, the money, many you, you get from uh, a new sponsor, they are gone. And you stay with your same fear like before maybe with some collateral effect, effect from the pills you take and uh, and said and when you don't skip this uh, part these fears but you look the fears in the eyes and you work on that and uh, you meditate and and you digest through your brief and too many kind of things these fears then you become free and more free and more free from your own fears. And this is something that makes you a better person, make you happier. And, uh, and this is something you can bring with you all your life. And you can pass to your sons or to other guys. And this is something that it has a value that any records, 
or money doesn't have. So this is my thought about this. Then, of course, sometimes I think um, maybe I'm here training and dreaming as well because I would love to do another world record um, or more than one in my career. <clears throat> and um, and this because I think that uh, through that we still live in a society where uh, philosophers are not so interesting and uh, champions, big champions are more interesting. And this is sad because good philosophers, they can teach us wisdom. But the average of the society is more interested in, uh, in seeing success, big numbers, big cars you know, <laughs> these kind of things. So uh, what I think maybe if I, I reach some other nice uh, records, I can have some more uh, audience and, um, and maybe I can say some more words. And also I'm grateful to you that because to me, uh, yes, it's time I could be in the water now enjoying and I'm here sitting in, in a room <laughs> talking it's but a little bit like a cave but, actually but to me is uh, is also um, a very nice opportunity to to share uh, some thought and uh, and I really need I think that um, makes me feel good to try to plant some seed of love <laughs> uh, around so also, what I think to, to me trying to do a record is uh, to have audience, to have the, the people listening and the youngs listening, uh, that we can reach a nice result with, uh, with working hard, being patient, and, uh, and also a kind of spiritual path, like praying or being uh, having faith, uh, trusting yourself and the universe, and uh, and also having a healthy lifestyle that is another um, is another way of expressing love to yourself, because you treat you well, eating good uh, healthy food and and trying to sleep enough and do good things. And um, and then also to spread this to other people and uh, and of course, as healthier we are, as happier we are, and everything it goes uh, nice. Thank you for sharing those thoughts. I think it's a it's a really important message to share, the the one that you just shared. And um, you know the good thing about this conversation and also that we we put it out there is that I think a lot of the communication that is happening now most of the communication is happening in the social media and is happening in the chats on the comments on pictures and posts and this is not a place where people can really have a real human conversation you know so yeah. so the more opportunity we have to uh, to speak like like people, like humans, and, 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 and people will listen to it. I think the free diving community in general is actually like very, very open and perceptive to, uh, to health and to, to approaching free diving in the way that you describe. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, there are some, maybe some bad actors in the, in the community, and, uh, and it's, um, you know, perhaps they won't, they won't realize now, but they will realize later, later. in the future. Yeah, for that, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as well, I, I know that about these, uh, uh, these uh, things and this scandal about doping, uh, there is also a lot of hate uh, on the social media and uh, like a battle between people trying to defend or... Um, I'm not, I'm against doping. I'm not against uh, people. I think that if some people took uh, doping in the past, now, in the future, uh, they are just confused and, uh, and they need also maybe some love to understand that uh, everybody we can make a mistake 
I did a lot of mistakes in my life and, <coughs> and it's normal. And then uh, we can forgive each other and we can try to support each other and to grow. And uh, I, I think that if we try to, to understand that some things, and I mean in natural things or uh, things like the, the force, the natural way, are not so good and healthy uh, is important. Also, some people told me, ah, but so also spirulina is a doping or uh, or ashwagandha is a doping or uh, everything. Also, chamomilla is changing you. Mm -hmm. also, Caffeine, it, also, it, a tea is changing yeah. you. So everything is changing you. But there are some things that are natural and they're making you also healthier and there are some other things that are uh, not so natural and they are mm, making you not so healthy so also we have to try to to make that to understand yeah <clears throat> and and also about this eight created on the social media i think that also defending a person that make a mistake is not love if a friend of mine he make a mistake if i really want to help my friend i will go to tell him you make a mistake i will not say oh you poor no because if i say ah oh, you poor you're good it's okay what you did this i'm not helping my friend so it's not defending that we can help uh, people is just uh, saying okay you did a mistake okay you you start and you have passion you learn and you, and you will be a great athlete because these people they are very strong of course they cannot do these things just with doping the doping is in a little head mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm, uh, yeah. I'm sure they can do the same things without this little head, mm. just learning how to deal with what they have to deal. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the social media realm and that means of communication is, um, it leads, it leads to, to each person having a, a, a view of reality that, that it's very easy for them to support that view because they click like on something and then the next thing that comes up reinforces the thing that they like so you tend to see what you want to see yes. and then uh, actually having conversations like this are quite difficult but let's uh, let's hope that this little uh, wave of negativity washes over the uh, free diving community quickly and then yeah. we move on to better things yeah and uh, if not then that's the way it is but let's talk a little bit more about you because um, I remember you were a little bit kind of out of the scene for a while and then a couple of years ago you came back, you did like, I think last year in Vertical Blue you did 123 meters yeah. in constant weight, which was amazing. And then this year you did 130 and it just like yeah. blew my mind. Like we, we were all sitting in Dahab Freedivers, just heads exploding and melting. And this is... Um, it's a really huge increase in your performance. It's um, and it, it's not just that, but at least for me personally, I always see that it's like you, you're different in your diving. Something is different. You're stronger, way stronger. I was even saying a couple of times because you had the LMC on the surface, yeah. but I was like, of course, he was like coming up so fast that Too I thought quick. he yes. was gonna like <laughs> yes. pop out of the water, the, including the monofin. Yeah. So. What has happened in the last year or two that has invigorated you, that has improved your performance yeah. so much and taken you deeper? Yeah, it's not just the last uh, few years because... Um, uh, so the, f the first time I did 100 meter, it was uh, in uh, uh, 2009. Yes, in 2009 I did uh, 100 meter. It was 99.8 with mask without packing, without mouthfeel, because I didn't know about these uh, <laughs> things. And uh, so it was already a good uh, thing. At, at this time, I was uh, uh, just coming back from a few years 
where I was not competing. Be let's say between 2004 and 2008, I didn't compete. I was living like a, a fisherman, like mm -hmm. spare fishing. On your sailboat, On a I little yeah. sailing boat, a trimaran going around between Greece and Balearic, south of Italy, Sicily, like this. And uh, I was just spending my days in, in the sea fishing and then trying to live in a very simple way. Um, and uh, it was like a kind of uh, Eremitage. You know, it's, it yes, was I, yes. in that uh, time of like my a, life, I like need like being alone and uh, spend time connected to nature and, uh, and meditate and doing yoga and diving, doing these kind of things. Then in this time, I had a, a moment like it was a kind of spiritual dream. And in this spiritual dream, I received this message uh, from a saint, uh, Don Bosco, and uh, he told me, realize yourself into sport and then approach to religion. I understood that uh, the mission of my life, it was to try to, to work on myself, to being a better person working on myself, because to go deeper, unless you take pills, you, can, you, can, you have to work on yourself. Because uh, before, I always say before to go deep in the sea, you have to go deep inside yourself. And um, so it was to work on myself and then to share uh, what I learned and from the sea and from the experience and from other people. And, um, and so I started again training that. And, uh, and then also through this training, I realized things, for example, that I was, uh, I always was uh, interested by spirituality and, and also yoga, these kind of things. But I understood that I need as well to be rooted because I was too much in the air, like a tree that uh, it grows the branches and forget about the root. And then at certain point it fall down. So I had like a, a crisis, a little bit of depression, and and then I understand that I should go back to the root as well. And the root are the our animal side. That is also the strength, is also the the muscle, is also your relationship with uh, the food, with the money, with the family with sexuality, all these kind of things related to the first chakras, to the base of mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. our being. And, and so I went back to this part and I went back to a, also a physical training that was not just for running in the mountain and, uh, and doing yoga, but was also working again on the strength. Uh, and I understood that um, because I was s looking at athletes uh, that they were strong, like um, Alexei Molchanov, um, very strong in his legs and doing like uh, squat and heavy weight lifting. So I said, uh, maybe this it works. And I came from another school because at that time uh, when I started with uh, Umberto Pelizzari many years ago, the idea at that time of Umberto, it was uh, uh, we have to train just endurance to have long muscle that they don't burn uh, much. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so then I started to work on strength again, uh, to work on strength again. And, um, and every year also is uh, because uh, when I was talking about passion, I see when you start to do something, it's not that you start to do something and the next day you are strong. It's not that you go in a gym and you do 2,000 squat uh, uh, with weight and, and the next day you are Superman. Mm, it needs time. It needs time. You give input to your body gently and then again and then again and you grow. And so to work on strength, to work on peace of mind, to work is all a, a work that is not that you done from one day to the other. It needs passion. And this also, this job you are doing is already make you feeling better from the first day. Mm -hmm. Also, if you are not Superman the next day, 
But for the first day you go to the gym, you exit the gym and you feel good. The first day you do meditation, you finish your meditation and you feel good. So, and, and then it's just the thing of going on practicing and find the time and the <clears throat> energy to do it. And then uh, slowly, like a tree, I like to talk about tree because I love agriculture as well since I was uh, young. And um, so the tree, uh, it doesn't pretend that uh, the day after he was uh, planted to give uh, fruit. He needs time, he needs water, he needs love, he needs uh, manure, uh, he needs, you know, care. And then after a few years, it gives fruit. Mm. So the fruit are coming from my last dives is not what happened in the last two years, mm -hmm. but is mm -hmm. what happened in mm -hmm. all my life and also mm -hmm. become aware of my vulnerable point and working on that. Mm -hmm. And um, so also uh, in, I was competing when I was in Bali, when you make the interview to me to do some training and competition in 2018. And, um, I compete as well in 2013 and 14, 15. This year I was competing and going deeper and deeper. In 2016, I did uh, uh, 111, and then the next year I did 116. And then uh, next year I was uh, in Bali, I did um, deep dives as well. And then in then I had like a burnout because I was just diving deep, diving deep, diving deep. And I reached a point that I was like burnout. And so I said, OK, I have to take it easy. And uh, if not, I will make some, I will damage myself mm -hmm. because I was feeling that I was on the edge. And so I rested for a while, then I started again and they said, I will stop competing till the day I feel that I really want to go deep again. And this happened, happened like uh, in 2019, I went to the Spanish championship and uh, not diving very deep, but I felt, okay, now I want to go deep again. And, uh, and then I was always training anyway always training, uh, winter time, diving, gym, running, swimming pool, everything. And then the next year I start the COVID. So this is why I, I couldn't compete mm -hmm. in 2020. And then in 2021, I went to Vertical Blue and to the World Championship. And uh, I did 122 in 2022. 22, I did uh, 123 and uh, in training I did 125 and uh, and then it was easier and easier to go over the 120 and this year I trained all winter a lot and then I was doing dives winter time at 100 meter with the 8 mil uh, wetsuit. 100 that, meters with the 8 mil wetsuit yes, in the winter? Yes, in, mm -hmm. uh, in May, not winter, it was already, I started winter mm -hmm. doing like 80, 82, mm -hmm. 84, mm -hmm. slowly increasing, while I was also doing a lot of gym to strengthen the legs and always meditation and yoga and running in the mountain. <laughs> right, so anyone who's complaining about having to put the 5 millimeter wetsuit on in Dahab in the winter time should listen to this. I think, I think to me, it, it, came, it became also because the wetsuit we have today are different from the wetsuit we had like all, only five years ago. So I remember the, my 8 millimeter five years ago, I couldn't put the harms yeah. uh, up because it was so hard. Now uh, we have some material um, that are so nice. They are very soft and sometimes they doesn't squeeze too much because before the material or they were squeezing a lot if soft or too hard. And now we have um, very soft and material and warm at the same times. So I feel with the head mill comfortable like with a, a f three or four mm -hmm. mil so it's Are very you nice using the yamamoto or, or no. something else no it's a new material 
top secret. A top secret only <laughs> yes. for you? No, no, it's not only for me, it's for uh, all the people. At the moment, is Biavati, is my friend from Sardinia that makes me the wetsuit. Okay. That he <clears throat> developed this material with uh, some people in Asia, um, where he was buying the, the neoprene. And uh, and we we are very happy about this uh, material. Okay, top secret new uh, neoprene material coming soon. Uh, yeah. That's some juicy uh, gossip <laughs> for the guys out there. Yeah. yeah. So and I think is a very nice. Uh, I love to train also in this condition because uh, it's challenging. Is uh, like if you train going running up in the mountain with a backpack full of stone, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, of course, it's hard, but then the moment you you leave the backpack on the ground, you feel like flying. And uh, so I think also sometimes if we always train in the same way, uh, it could become boring. So this is why I like also to do different things. Uh, sometimes I go swimming, sometimes in the pool. Sometimes I put the five mil winter time or the three mil and I go swimming in the sea with the monofin and the frontal snorkel and I just swim. Many times, for example, uh, my son the, uh, my son is uh, is doing his sport, so I bring him to the gym to do his sport. I have one hour and a half free. I fast drive to the to the beach, I put the wetsuit on, I jump in the water, I swim one hour and then I go back to pick him up. And um, sometimes I go running in the mountain. Sometimes I go to the gym doing strength. Sometimes I do like uh, uh, interval training. And uh, so changing and, and challenging and also trying to understand where I feel uh, more weak in which kind of mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and strengthening this part. And then meditation, it helps a lot in this as well to become aware because when we train I think we have to focus on training uh, so uh, not distraction we don't have to think to other things or to make loud music or to get you know distracted we have really to when we train to be like in a meditation and to feel as much as possible mm. everything because this is the only way we become aware of our vulnerability and w then we can work on that and um, so i was saying as well the deep diving with a thick wetsuit is a uh, is challenging is strengthening and uh, and then when you go in warmer sea with uh, a thin wetsuit you feel like to fly and you gain also a lot of uh, confidence mm -hmm. and trust mm -hmm. because you feel you do a deep dive you come up you feel very nice and this it allows you to say okay so i can do some more meter and so you can increase mm. uh, your depth yeah. very good point um well it's been amazing watching you um these last uh, couple of years uh, i think that you're one of the most i think everyone that i've spoken to agrees that you have one of the most beautiful techniques I think that there's in free diving we also have space for diving beautifully, elegantly, with some yeah. grace. Now that we can see it with the camera, we can see the whole dive. I think that there's an element of, of you know, that we can also put grace into the the dive, and I, and I see that when you dive. Uh, I do have. Um, I have a lot of people supporting the show on Patreon. I want to bring in some questions from those guys yeah. a little bit on the line of training, if uh, if we can. Yeah. Um, but uh, the first one, um, and this is uh, from uh, Rodrigo and, and from myself also, because I'm very scared of the monofin. And he wants to know, like, how did you develop such a beautiful monofin technique? Is that something that comes naturally to you? Or did you have to focus on the technique very specifically for a long time? No, it's, uh, I, I believe also the monofin, uh, and this is my favorite discipline because it's very, um, you have to work on your spine and your flexibility so much. And um, I don't know if everybody know a little bit about yoga, but the chakras that are like energetic point are like 
point in the body where there are a lot of uh, neuronal termination so uh, there is there is energy and when i speak about energy uh, that sometimes can people when they speak about prana or ki or chi mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they think what is this it sounds something abstract but the energy is electricity is what makes the nervous system working and is the same that it light the the light on in, in a room mm-hmm. so uh, the ions that we breathe because when we breathe is not just the uh, the air uh, and uh, nitrogen and oxygen no it's also ions and this it go to nourish the nervous system and uh, and to nourish the these chakras that are located starting from the perineum and getting till the top of the head and um, so uh, the movement of the monofin uh, it goes to touch every single chakra every single part of our self and every single part of our self is related with uh, some emotions some fears some organs and so is like a um, something that is holistic something that is when i say is freedom is healing is also for this reason when we uh, make our back flexible from the first vertebra from the perineum till the top of the head this is very healthy and so working on this to me is very nice then i was a swimmer when i was a child and teenager and i was doing butterfly as well uh, i was a sprinter uh, and uh, and then um, when i started to use the monofin i really like it and i st- i at the same time i was doing yoga so working always on the flexibility of the back of the hips and uh, so the this job on flexibility with yoga and uh, with the monofin uh, it helped me very much about the technique and then like i said before the work also in the gym to strengthen to understand thanks also to my uh, trainer and many friends that they are very good in training they helped me observing me and trying to look in the videos and understand which kind of muscle you use more and uh, how to work on that and so uh, my trainer Jacopo Querci uh, he gave me the exact exercise to do to strengthen uh, mainly the, the, all the muscle around the hips and uh, and so yeah it's all these so strengthening and working on flexibility at the same times uh, that at the end it gives the beautiful technique mm-hmm. and these years of also yes job on that yeah i mean i just spoke to alexi you know um and uh what comes across from that conversation also is that a lot of people maybe today are losing sight of the fact that there are years of development involved in reaching the, these depths in a comfortable and safe and in your case a beautiful way and uh, maybe it's a little bit a sign of the times that people want to go from their 30 meter uh, depth to the 60 70 meter range a little bit uh, too quickly sometimes and, and skip some of this um, holistic approach to developing free diving yeah um, a lot of people wanting to know and about removing the nose clip so deep i think you're removing the nose clip just after you turn around yes i always did like this um, when i was uh, doing safety to umberto pelizzari and he was doing his record more than 20 years ago uh, he was always uh, taking out the nose clip at uh, at the bottom when he was uh, turned and so to me when i started to use the nose clip i did the same and i always uh, felt good and uh, i like also uh, the feeling as more my face is uh, free and naked as more i feel the water caressing my face is uh, beautiful feelings and then i believe that uh, reaching the surface without the nose clip uh, is also better because I don't have to think mm-hmm. on removing mm-hmm. the nose clip. Mm-hmm. So this it works for me very well. Mm-hmm. 
You mentioned before that, um, <clears throat> you know, back in, was it 2009, you were already doing 100 meters. You were not, uh, you didn't know about mouth fill. Um, someone, uh, Mark, um, said that watching your video, it looks like you are bringing up air or reverse packing as deep as 100 meters or more. Is that the case, that you just have that flexibility, that you can still retrieve air at that depth? Or is that contractions that you see? Or No, di going down normally, uh, unless I'm sick, I normally don't have uh, contraction. I normally have very late contraction, also when I do static. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, what I do now, at that time in 2009, I know because people, they were already packing and doing mouthfeel. So I, I did know about that, but I wasn't using because uh, uh, from my old school, packing, it was already a kind of doping because it was, yeah. if, nature, Cheating, yeah. if nature gave me seven liter... Uh, uh, capacity, lung capacity, why you have to put uh, eight or nine? <laughs> so it, it was like, but then of course I tried after a few years and uh, I think the first time it was in like in 2014 that I tried mouthfeel and, uh, and packing and, um, and I see yeah, it helps. And so why not? If I want to do a record, uh, I, I have to do also you know, something that helps a little bit more. And um, and so I started to do it. But at that time, I wasn't use, using for that reason. And um, and I think a lot of years also of um, deep spare fishing, so many hours and hours spent in the sea makes, and also the fact that I started when I was a child, uh, it makes my cage and maybe my diaphragm uh, and also yoga it makes this flexibility that allowed to equalize also kind of deep mm. and, sa and safely moment, too yes because you, you're i not, never had never had a squeeze, had a squeeze. That's only crazy. once in my life because i did a big mistake mm -hmm. it was like strong current and we were trying to put a line on a rack because the next day we had to do a video on this 80 meter deep wreck. And uh, the technical diver, they didn't have time to go to put the line on the wreck that it helps to, to go in the right place. So I tried to go down with a scooter that was very slow, a lot of current, and I was never getting down. And uh, with 100 meter rope, pulling 100 meter <laughs> big, <laughs> <laughs> rope and a balloon so it was a very 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 long uh, dive and i remember going down I st that in that case yes i had like contraction and um and in that case i arrived on the wreck and i f didn't found at first a place where to put this carabiner i had in my head <laughs> and, and so i lose other time and then when i surfaced that day i was uh, spitting blood but normally I don't have a squeeze and um, also when I did 130 meter in the last vertical blue there was a team of uh, doctors uh, also with uh, echo yeah 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 so maybe Bizo Bizo Silva Bizo. Yeah, yeah 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 Bizo He's, very nice guy yeah he did yeah. an amazing interview on this uh, show uh, yeah. really detailed yeah Bizo yeah. he was looking at my lungs and he said it was clean mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, so he, uh, it's, it's okay. And it's about working on flexibility, of yeah, course. Yeah. And, uh, and then about equalization, actually what I do, I fill my mouth, uh, I start around 20 meters, and then I keep filling till uh, 40 meters, and then I keep the air in the mouth. Then, cause all my life I did hands free and I push with the, backside of the tongue to the soft palate. Um, I'm not so good in putting the air from the mouth to the here. So I just keep mm, like equalizing like I always did in my life. And then when I arrive to a point that I feel I don't have any more air, and this normally is after the 100 meter deep, 
And that moment, I put the air even still in the mouth, back in the lungs, and I do another couple of equalization. And this, at that depth, it allowed me to reach mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. under 30 well. And um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you, uh, for me personally, I'm super interested to know about your experiences with narcosis. Is that something that is very strong for you at, at 130 meters? Are you dealing with narcosis a lot? No, no. Uh, I think this also is a lot about adaptation and being patient. And then, uh, uh, for example, some people, they feel narcosis like uh, something bad, like a nightmare. When I have narcosis, I enjoy it because uh, I feel like um, light and I feel like everything is, I I have more perception. It's like if the mind is low down and you feel more Mm -hmm. any kind of feelings, the water, yeah, you feel more the water, you feel more everything. And um, I think it's just about don't being scared about the narcosis, don't be scared about losing control because you feel a little bit stoned but uh, like mm, trust in yourself trust in the ocean and uh, and just being calm and just knowing that you go back to the surface surface and, and everything goes well then um, sometimes if I do a deep dive after a long time without deep diving, I feel narcosis. But I see how much it adapts. And for example, before to go the vertical blue, I did some um, uh, dive as well with the um, variable weight Mm -hmm. there at home and um, and doing static at more than 110 and like this. So doing a static at 110 uh, of course, you get into a big narcosis, and uh, but there that I was like focusing on. Okay, I get down, I put the hand on the uh, valve to open the air for the balloon to go back, and then I observe what is happening, and then when I feel the narcosis start to increase, before that I get too stoned, <laughs> I open. The, mm-hmm. the balloon. So you just stay very, very aware of your condition. Yes. And then before it's too much, you yes. open up. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Of course. Is mm-hmm. uh, and this is being being calm and going always step by step. Don't don't exaggerate in never you do, and uh, and trust this process of of that anything need time any kind of adaptation and also about the rush uh, and the sea because also the squeeze i think many times they they come from people that they rush to go deep maybe they come very well trained from very long dynamic in the pool and when they go to the sea they say okay i do 200 meter in the pool so i can do 100 meter deep and it's not the same it's like if you take a athlete uh, from marathons that he trans marathon in in very fast and so he's very trained and uh, you think you take this athlete and you bring it to the Everest and it will, it will uh, run up to the Everest uh, easily no he need days of acclimatization mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. adaptation mm-hmm. to the the height to the low to oxygen the, and yeah, the air. The, yeah. yes and the same is in the sea we need time to adapt to the pressure to adapt to things and the body it can do incredible things the only things in need time to adapt we can adapt to very high temperature we can adapt to very low temperature but not from one day to the next yeah. mm-hmm. we need time and uh, and if you are patient and you listen to your body without pushing too hard because it doesn't need to push too hard to in- increase also this is a concept that to me is very important many people they think uh, yeah i have to push hard to push hard if i want to become to become better 
to me we doesn't need to push so hard and it seems a paradox mm -hmm. but when you keep training and keep going you are always giving input to your body and your body it will be every day better if you push hard it will just ne next day be too tired and uh, and so you cannot practice and so sometimes sometimes it's nice to push hard of course i like sometimes to go to the gym and the next day i couldn't walk but but, but not all the time mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. it's about feeling sometimes it's a, a pleasure work hard sometimes it's not a pleasure mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it's a pleasure to learn how to rest and sometimes resting is a pleasure sometimes resting is not a pleasure uh, so it's all about balance where is uh, home for you now you said uh, back in home where are you where do you, where do you call home mm, look mm, i was born in turin in 1975 then i started free diving in the um, ligurian sea because my grandparents have a house there when i was a child and then i traveled uh, quite a lot i lived uh, around on the sailing boat i lived in sardinia for a few years and then i moved to spain because um, the mom of my son she found job there near malaga and uh, i went there to stay close to to my son and um, and i feel good there I now I can say I feel at home. Okay, so you this is the main place that you call yes. home now. I live in Nerja that is like 40 minutes east from Malaga. Okay. And the people are nice, the place is nice, the weather is nice, so it's it's good. Uh, there's a question from you. What, what is your son's name again? Uh, Nero. Nero. So <laughs> there's a question from uh, Jamie or Jaime uh, that um, you know they want to know. Uh, if your son is also into free diving and if you see him diving deep one day because we see him supporting you at bes in the ocean beside you on the dives but yes. he, does he also like it as much as you do um yes uh, but i don't want i hope my son doesn't listen this interview no i'm joking <laughs> uh, no i don't want to uh, to have any influence more than what it is already mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. being me a free mm -hmm. diver on him because i remember that my father he was a very good football player and uh, he couldn't realize himself because um, my grandparents at that time the idea was the sport it doesn't make you concentrate on studying on this kind of thing so <laughs> he wasn't so free to to play football but he was good and when I was a child, he tried to make me play football and uh, I was feeling like uh, a kind of pressure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like the expectation of my father expecting from me being good in football. So I wasn't enjoying playing like a child. I was feeling like uh, I have to. And, uh, and so I stopped it and I say to my father, bring me to the pool because I love to be in the water. And um, so I don't want, I want to leave my son free uh, and that he can express himself. Maybe he will do other sports. In that moment, in this moment he's exploring every year. He, he does different sports um, and uh, he's exploring. Uh, and to me also, it could be a sport. It could be a, a, anything, a music or any kind of art, you know, that can help to express yourself so he has to find his own way um, then uh, he loves water he loves to swim he loves surfing and uh, he loves uh, he loves free diving but sometimes i think he's so free diving like uh, that is my job mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, but some for example, in vertical blue playing, he went to 40 meter and mm -hmm. he's uh, mm -hmm. 14 years old. Right, yeah. So he can be the next um, Alexei Molchanov. Mm -hmm. He can be the next Davide Carrera. Yeah, he, he <laughs> has, in, you know, the evolution in the genes. Yes, he has yes. already uh -huh. the job I did. Uh -huh. 
and so is this is done uh-huh, uh-huh. so he he has only uh-huh. to add some but more yes there has to be his own choice to uh, to follow that path yes yeah, if yeah. he would like uh, i will be very happy to help mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. if not i will be happy anyway to help him in doing other things mm-hmm. just one more question on the maybe not so much the technique side but you've mentioned um You've mentioned uh, meditation before. Meditation is a huge subject and uh, and and something that you know has a, a whole many traditions, many techniques, many schools, many approaches, many ideas. Yeah. But for you personally, is there a, a meditation practice that you are doing as a kind of a regular daily practice that supports your your mental state when you uh, go free diving? Yeah, I normally meditate uh, three times a day sometimes four and uh, without any uh, particular technique to me meditation i mean i i sit down to meditate three or four times a day but then like i was saying before to bring this state of meditation into what you are doing also while you are training while you are uh, doing other things uh, to me is very important and um, and so meditation uh, many people they ask what is meditation mm-hmm. meditation is the silence of the mind when mm-hmm. we can slow down the mind and the noise we have in our head and so in that moment we can get in touch with our feelings and also with waves that they comes from the universe from from other people we can become more telepathic we can have intuition uh, we can make clarity in our mind just slowing down turning a little bit down the volume mm-hmm. of the thought you know the yoga sutras right second sutra yoga chitta vritti nirotaha the yoga is the stilling of the fluctuations of the mind yeah and actually that's the whole thing yeah in in, in the, right in the beginning you have all the all the information there <laughs> yeah and uh, and so normally i see that is much easier to enter this state <coughs> of calm mind when uh, we are like a little bit uh, empty uh, so normally i try to do it before eating so i the first i wake up i go to the toilet <laughs> and then i sit down uh sometimes i do some yoga before like some sun salutation i started a few months ago also uh, in doing hurt salutation that a friend of mine teached me and is nice hurt hurt like yes. painful no no what no. is hurt no hurt to the the ground oh, earth, to the planet earth. yes hurt uh, yes sorry but you mean hurt like to uh, me english is in certain words is so uh-huh difficult because uh, to me hurt <laughs> yeah yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it's yeah difficult. i can understand to you it's almost the like, same yeah. like air <laughs> yeah yeah we have like very very small differences in the words make yeah and i'm not meaning. so yeah. able to cut these differences so yeah. to me also the air or the air we breathe is yeah, it's the it's same. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> sound yeah. almost yeah. the same uh-huh. Uh-huh. anyway and so you say uh, earth salutations yes i think it's also a good balance because many times we think spirituality is going towards the sky the father and we forgot that we, we have also a mother uh-huh. no uh-huh. that is uh-huh. the the uh-huh. planet the uh-huh. mother earth uh-huh. and and also uh, is up and down is the same and like masculine and feminine right and left yin and yang so when we find this balance between the opposite we find also more peace and so when we are only thinking to the sky and we think the spirituality is in the sky and we forgot about our roots mm. and our connection to to the the mother heart uh, then we are not balanced so also doing this uh, Heart uh, salutation. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. say Earth well. salutations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's balancing uh-huh. and it's nice. I'd be interested to see how they look because I do something called ground, yeah. grounded salutations, which is where you start on the mat like a kneeling position, yeah. and you stay 
with the, the legs on the ground. You yeah. don't stand up. We will, we will I'm interested to compare if we're talking about the same thing. Because, you know, people, uh, I often recommend this for people who are either beginning or who who don't have the energy to start with sun salutations okay. because sometimes the the high energy uh, is is it's too challenging for people to start their day with this uh, yeah. standing up and moving around but when you start from the ground and you kind of like almost like wake up like a flower you know like yeah. opening up slowly and and uh, yeah, yeah this also is a practice i like to do it's like uh, i feel sometimes i i lay down belly on the floor and they stay there and the better sometimes is with some tribal tribal mm -hmm. like very grounding music mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i stay there till i start to feel the music in my belly and then i start to like to sprout like a, a seed mm. you know? so i feel that i'm down into the the shade of the herd mm -hmm. and then i start to sprout looking for uh, for the light and coming out and uh, it's a nice feeling and it's very grounding and uh, anyway to finish the previous thing about meditation then uh, then i go i do my things i go to the sea and then when i come back before uh, lunch i do another uh, meditation that to me is sitting down 15 minutes 20 10 it depends on feelings but to have this moment that is like okay i take a moment where i try to turn off the 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 mind and just to feel to feel my breath to feel my body to let that the thought they come not from my mind but from the universe and uh, and then um observing yeah and then i do the same before dinner and sometimes if I had a very challenging day or very active, sometimes I do another one before to go to sleep to help also to to relax the, the mind before to go to sleep. Yeah. Thank you. That's answering my own questions. And also uh, Jamie and Darren were asking about meditation. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to ask you one more question. I think probably we, we asked this one already, but we never know how it changes and maybe the answer evolves a little bit for you. But... Davide, why do you free dive? Yeah, I think I I told uh, that a little bit before that um, I free dive because I feel good first, and and then at that point I discovered that because uh, I have this talent in free diving since I was a child, uh, I could use this talent to give a message. And so the why I I want to go deeper uh, because it's not necessary to go deeper and deeper to feel good because I feel good also if I go here in front and I do dives to 30 or 20 or 40, I feel good as well. But um, of course to go deeper and deeper, I have to work more and more and more on my ego and my, my fears on strengthening my body and my mind and being healthy as much as possible to keep my body also at, at my edge. And I want to go on for at least other 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> right. so, so I have to, to be healthy. And, uh, and then to spread this uh, message about love, what, what we try to, mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing uh, this conversation with us. Davide, thank you for, and, and nice to meet you uh, finally in person. Um, yeah, welcome to Dahab and talk thank to you, you next time, maybe yeah. in another five years, and maybe 30, 40 years down the line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you Yeah, for the opportunity to express myself and to, to know in this way other people. Yeah, and then I don't know if it's possible, but if the people, they will listen and see these, they have uh, some comments or some uh, input uh, or advice or uh, other question. Maybe they can back come back to you or by mm -hmm. Instagram mm -hmm. to me or mm -hmm. 
or mm. whatever. Yeah, the evil Instagram that we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, but like everything is, you know, alchemy. Yes, yes. Anything yes. can be a medicine yeah. or a poison. Yes. It depends how, how you, you use, use it. the power. And yes, the, yes. And the, uh, if you put love in what you do, also the worst poison it can become a medicine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you put eight, also the best, the paradise, you can transform the paradise in one minute in hell. That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. So, yeah. And so. this is like, like the, this is the Dahab experiment actually that is going on constantly, this uh, shift between paradise and hell for the people who live here and about the yeah. perspective that they choose. Yeah. Right now, I'm still in paradise. Good. Um, yeah, so if you guys are watching or listening and you have any questions or comments for Davide, then we can uh, exchange them with him and, uh, and uh, he can uh, respond to you. But uh, until we meet again, dive safe. Thank you, everybody, and uh, see you next time. Nice.